PJ Walker has been all around the football world, from the NFL to the XFL, and then back to the NFL once again. And in this video, I'm going to look at the insane journey of the quarterback leading the Carolina Panthers, Philip Walker. Walker, with time, takes the shot. Cam Phillips, caught. Touchdown, Renegades. PJ Walker was born on February 26, 1995, in Elizabeth, New Jersey. Growing up, Walker was a big football fan and played it all throughout his childhood. So of course, when he got his shot in high school, he played quarterback on varsity his junior season. That season alone, he threw for over 2,100 yards and 18 touchdowns, along with a 63% completion percentage. PJ had a great senior season to end it all off with a 13-0 record that got him recognized by some college teams. Coming out of high school, PJ was a three-star and was ranked just within the top 50 dual threat quarterbacks in the country. Although PJ had a solid high school career, it just wasn't enough to get him on the radar of many Power 5 schools, and instead he only got interest from schools like Toledo, Rutgers, Massachusetts, James Madison, Connecticut, ECU, and Temple. The only notable schools of the bunch are ECU and the school that he would end up committing to, Temple. Temple was the perfect fit for PJ and he meshed well with head coach Matt Rule. If that name sounds familiar, he's now the head coach of the Panthers. Anyways, let's get back to the story. PJ was going into the temple as a backup behind junior Connor Riley until Connor suffered a knee injury that took him out of week 5 against Louisville, a game that was a blow up from the beginning, but gave Walker the chance to play his first collegiate game as he combined for over 200 all purpose yards. The next week against Cincinnati is when Walker was able to earn the starting spot as he threw for his first collegiate touchdown and for 200 yards in total. They lost the game pretty bad, 38 to 20, but Walker was on his way. Walker was finally able to shine against Army in week seven, where yet again he threw for over 200 yards and led Temple to a 33 to 14 victory. The following week against SMU, Walker had his best game with over 290 yards passing and 90 yards rushing, but it just wasn't enough as SMU won 59 to 49. This performance, although losing one, earned him a College Football Quarterback of the Week nomination. But Walker was able to end the season on a positive, with a 41-21 win against Memphis, where he threw for over 300 yards for only the second time in his career and became a finalist for the Manning Award. That season, Walker finished with just over 2,000 yards and 20 touchdowns to only 8 interceptions. Upon that, he ran for over 300 yards and 3 touchdowns. Temple had nowhere to go but up after their terrible 2013 season. And with the help of Walker and head coach Matt Rule, the team became much better. That season, PJ threw for 2,300 yards and 13 touchdowns, but also threw 15 interceptions. And although he ran for 303 touchdowns, it was a down year for PJ. Even though PJ struggled, Temple went 6 and 6 and was getting better and better each and every year. PJ had a sophomore slump his second season and knew he had to play better for the team to reach the next level, and he did just that his junior season. That year, Temple went 10-3 and, and was able to make the Boca Raton Bowl against one of the teams that wanted PJ in Toledo, and that team also wanted the game a lot more and beat Temple 32-17 to, to end a great season for Temple in a heartbreak. That season, PJ threw for nearly 3,000 yards and 19 touchdowns to only 8 interceptions and was back in elite form along with 200 yards rushing and 2 touchdowns. Obviously, PJ got the message that if he played better, the team could do well, and that year the team played way better. Following the disappointing ending to his junior season, PJ gave his senior season his all in order to finish on top and potentially make it to the next level. That year, PJ threw for just under 3,300 yards and 22 touchdowns to only 13 picks, although he somehow ran for negative 100 yards and only one touchdown. I don't know how this happened, but it didn't matter as the team went 10-3 and again, ending the season with a huge 30-40-10 win against number 19 ranked Navy. Yet again, Temple made it to another bowl in the military bowl against Wake Forest, which was yet another disappointing postseason loss 34-26. Although PJ ended his college career disappointingly, he caught the attention of the Indianapolis Colts and landed on the roster as an undrafted free agent. Although PJ was waived only a few months later and was put on the practice squad, which happened to him the very next year and the next year until he was released in September of 2019 from the team. For many, this could be the end for professional football, but Walker got a massive break as the XFL was coming back. Been before. This is the XFL. Walker dominated the XFL and from the beginning was the best in the entire league. Walker started off hot and threw for four touchdowns in a 37-17 win against the LA Wildcats and won the next four games along with throwing for over 1,300 yards and 15 touchdowns to only four interceptions. These stats were the best in the league 
and Walker ended as the XFL passing yards and touchdowns leader. Everything was going great until the XFL season was canceled on March 20th, 2020 and eventually terminated on April 10th, 2020. Although the XFL didn't last, PJ was able to gain the attention of some NFL teams and piqued the interest of the Carolina Panthers, who ended up signing him only five days after the season was canceled on March 25th, 2020. PJ not only got on the team, but signed a two-year deal with a team worth $1.5 million, which was a lot more than he was paid in the XFL. Not only was PJ back in the NFL, but he was able to be reunited with his old Temple coach, Matt Rule, four years later. Not only did PJ make the team, on October 29th, 2020, PJ came in for the Panthers during the third quarter against the Falcons after Teddy Bridgewater got injured. PJ only threw for one completion of three yards and was benched when Teddy was healthy again, but he was able to get his first reps in the NFL. Following another Teddy injury in week 10 against the Tampa Bay Bucks, Walker was able to finish the game with 12 yards. The following week against the Detroit Lions, PJ got his first NFL start, where he led the Panthers to a 20 to nothing win, while throwing for over 250 yards and a touchdown although he threw two interceptions. PJ Walker is a prime example of how never giving up can take someone from nothing to everything. Out of the pocket is Walker. Wide open is Mobley again. This time they connect. Touchdown, Roughnecks. Thanks for watching the video and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll be posting a video on Tuesday, so stay tuned and God bless.